everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Summer, we're doing the butterfly haircut today. This is a fun cut with lots of movement and soft layers around the face while gradually getting longer in the back. This cut honestly reminds me of a softer shag in a way, and I can't wait to break down how I achieved this cut. Before we get started, I wanna say thank you to Sleep & Glow for making today's video possible. I have been using their Omnia pillow and I am loving it. If you are a side sleeper like me, you might have noticed the way that your face scrunches up on your pillow at night, leaving crease lines and leading to wrinkles. Also having lash extensions, it's always been a challenge for me to keep my corners full in between appointments and a traditional pillow really allows for smushing them along with my face. And I've always thought to myself, why isn't there a pillow with cutouts for your face? Here came Sleep & Glow to the rescue, giving me all the ways to keep my lashes intact while also preventing those sleep and wrinkle lines, a win-win. Sleep & Glow's Omnia is designed with those cutouts to soften the pressure on your face as you sleep. You can see my whole hand fits between my face and the pillow. You still get great support on your neck with the top and bottom cushions to give you a great night's rest. It comes with their own pillowcase as well as an additional insert if you want to raise the pillow. Designed by orthopedists, it's the perfect balance between firm and soft, keeping your body correctly lined while you sleep. So sleep and glow. My face thanks you, my neck thanks you, and my lashes thank you. They offer a 30-day sleep trial and a three-year warranty. All info will be linked below along with an exclusive discount, so be sure to check it out. Okay, so we are just gonna get started by sectioning here off first. We've got a nice middle part, and what I'm gonna do to create my first section, we're gonna come in and do a triangle part. So similar to how I do a triangle with um, my shag haircuts. So one thing I wanna make note with this haircut, it'll be important when we get to the sides, I wanna have the base of my triangle come to where the comb leaves the head here, um, which is right about in line where I put it, so I lucked out there. Um, that's gonna be important for moving into the sides, but for now I'm gonna make sure that that base is coming right to where the comb leaves the head. So I'm gonna make my triangle Again, coming in and then double check on this side to make sure the base of that triangle is meeting at the right area. I feel like I need to adjust that just slightly. Then you're gonna comb the hair all the way back. So the reason why I'm doing a triangle here is I'm setting my guide for obviously where we wanna cut the length here however short or long your client wants to leave the hair for their framing around the face. And then it also is going to set our guide when moving into the sides underneath. So I'm just gonna clip these sides back. And then we're gonna think about where the client in your consultation, or if you're thinking of getting this haircut, figure out where it is that you want your hair to come down. Do you wanna be able to pull it back, pin it back? But for this, I'm gonna have it staying right around her lip area for her bang in the front. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take the center of our triangle, so right at her nose for our first section, And what you'll do is you're gonna figure out where you wanna have this coming down to. Bring the hair down, get a guide within reason. If you wanna cut this a little longer, you can if you're nervous. So we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna come straight out from the head. And you're gonna be cutting in vertical sections as opposed to with a shag, I tend to do horizontal. So this is gonna be coming straight out from the head, find where your guide is. And like I said, we're kind of coming up to her lip. I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer at first, just so I have some leeway. So pull straight out and cut. Okay, so now that we have cut our guide, so to speak, we're gonna come in into your side triangle piece. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this back to the center. I'm not gonna keep rounding with the head. I'm gonna bring it straight back out to the center. So right along with her nose. And I would be, if I were insulin doing this, standing in front of the client more so. I'm just trying not to block both cameras. So pull with your tension. I like to use the finer side of my comb. 
Again, bring it to the center, come straight out. See your guide here and cut. Take the rest of your section, over direct it to the center. You can put your hands down and touch their nose if you wanna make sure that you're coming out to the center and cut and we're gonna repeat on the same side to get our guide going. Straight out to the center, right here. Little bit of hair there, perfect. And then I'm gonna just bring everything forward one last time. Okay, so now that we have our guide set, and again, she's probably a little long for where I technically want her, but if you're unsure of the length or your client is unsure, always go longer. So now that I have that done, what we're gonna do now is separate the rest of the top from the sides. So coming in, at where the base of your triangle is, you're just gonna take all the hair. So we see the base of our triangle and we're just gonna section all the top of the hair up into its own section, keeping the sides down. All the way around the head. We're gonna just clip this up. And then I wanna leave out my corners, cause again, those are our guides for working into the sides. And I'm gonna clip up the rest of it that's in the center. And then what you'd wanna do too, stand in front of your client, make sure you check the corners that they're lining up and cut anything if it's off at all, just make sure that they're level. Okay, so we've got those nice and even. So now what we're gonna do is, this is similar with how I do my shag. I would be standing technically in front of the client bringing everything forward. And what we're gonna do is we're literally gonna work all the way around the entire head. So you're gonna start on your side, keep pulling sections back all the way till you reach this back part and everything's going to be coming forward towards you. So what that allows for with the butterfly haircut is we want the hair in the back to be a little bit longer. Think of it in terms of the body of a butterfly is long and the wings are coming out and you always see that base of their body. That's what you're essentially mimicking. You're gonna have all your nice shorter face framing pieces that are flowing back to the back. Okay, so what you're gonna do to take your first sections along your side is you're gonna come in and instead of doing straight vertical sections, I'm gonna create a little bit of a diagonal to just create a soft angle. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow for more flow moving from the front to the back of the head and I feel like it just softens it up a little bit. So you can clip this back if you wanna keep it out of the way, that's personal preference. Um, if they have a lot of length, it might be easier to clip it out of the way. And then we're gonna come back and then where your guide is here, you're just gonna bring the hair straight over and straight out from the head straight forward. You're not gonna over direct it one way or pull it towards you straight out from the head. And then to help keep some softness going, we're just gonna slightly angle our section up. You don't need to do it super severely steep. You don't wanna be completely 90, just a little bit to create some softness there. And what that also does too is the way your hands are positioned, it gives for a little bit more length in the back. So again, as it comes down, you get that nice swoop. So bring everything slightly for, bring everything forward and slightly angle up. I'm gonna angle my shears as well, cut. Come down from that bottom. Again, go forward, coming up, cut. And then we're gonna continue just taking our sections again, create a little bit of an angle with it to keep it soft and bring everything forward. 
fine side of that comb, forward, angling up, cut. And so we're just gonna continue to move with the roundness of the head for this. You will, after a while, no longer have hair that you're meeting because like I said, this is a lot of layers around the face, but you're keeping that base and weight in the back to create that body. So while you're gonna have a lot of shorter layers in the front, you do have more of a longer layered look in the back. And then I wanna make note too, with this butterfly haircut, shags have a disconnect to them, so to speak, but I feel like a butterfly haircut definitely is meant to have a little bit more of a disconnect from the front to the back. Um, I'll show you what I mean once I get it dried and styled, you'll see. And then I'll show you guys if you wanna connect it more, you certainly can, but keep in mind this haircut is meant to be a little bit of that disconnect of the wing, so to speak. So as you take your sections back, you're gonna, as you get to the back side of the hair, bring your diagonal all the way back or all the way down. Again, you can clip the hair out of the way if it's easier for you. And then again, we're bringing all that hair forward. So straight forward with a little bit of an angle and cut. Take your back section and you can lower your hands if you want for this, but keep that angle and we're already losing the hair coming in. So forward, 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 angle that up, cut. Take that back. And like I said, at this point, you have a little bit of an amount. And then once you get to the center of the back of the head, you're gonna go ahead and switch to your other side. All right, so we've reached the middle here. So we're gonna come over to this other side now and do the same exact steps. So our first section, again, creating a little bit of that diagonal, clip the hair back if you need to. So now I'm standing in front of the client. This is how I would be in salon. It's a little bit easier. You're bringing everything straight out, extend your hands to create a little bit of that angle and cut. Again, I like to work with the fine side of my comb to create some nice tension. Grab that hair from underneath. Straight forward. And we're already starting to keep that length. It's also important you wanna make sure that the hair is fairly damp when cutting. If you need to respray anywhere, go ahead and do that, but that way it helps keep for even flow while you're cutting the hair. And then also, if you notice, I did not start out by cutting any um, of the length on the perimeter of this haircut. You can certainly do that before you start with the layers if you want, but after you get these layers that I'm doing um, done, you could go in and remove any length that your client want, that your client might want taken out. Um, but I like to create with this type of haircut the layers first and then go in and refine if need be.
Okay, so this is our last piece for this side because we're at the middle of the head here now on the other side and we barely have some hair to cut. So I'm gonna let that down. And you can either move directly into the top, but to be on the safe side, I recommend sort of checking some of your layers around the face first. So you would stand in front of the client and just check everything, bringing it forward and cleaning up as need be. So just bring everything to the center. I feel like it's looking good. Move on to the layers. I feel like she needs a little bit taken off right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna come in, check my guide again into that a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna respray. Okay, so I've got her spritz down just cause I wanted she to get a little dry. Now we're going to move into the top. So I'm gonna angle her a little bit so you guys can see better hopefully. So what you're gonna do to create the layers on the top, we're gonna take everything out and I'm gonna comb it forward similar to how I would do if this were a shag. And we're gonna cut it with the same pattern in mind as we did the triangle originally. So the center is gonna all be in the center. The outer corners here are gonna come into the center. She's got a lot of length here for the layers to be removed. If you wanted to, you could um, remove a little bit of this bulk, but you're also blending these back layers into the layers in the back. So I'll show you how we'll twist those hands. So that's why I'm not gonna opt to cut off some of the hair. So we're gonna take our first parting here right down the middle, close to the middle. And then again, because she's got so much length, I'm gonna clip these sides just to get a little bit more control. Okay, so to cut our section, I'm gonna split this in half sort of just so this back is out of the way. What I'm gonna be doing is bringing these layers forward, but as I move back in the section, we're gonna be coming up and rounding with the head. So these layers flow in to this back section. So we're gonna come up, take our hair. We are gonna have it at an angle, not coming straight out like we were. I'm gonna lift it a little bit with the roundness of the head and keeping an angle with my fingers, so twist. We'll see our guide right here at the top and cut. And then we're gonna take our next section, coming out with the roundness of the head, twist, come from your bottom here and cut into that next section. And we're gonna continue to do this all the way till we get to the back. So we're bringing straight up at this point from the head almost, twisting, see your guide, cut. Next section, you can drop that here in the front. Going back a little bit now, because we're gonna be falling into the back. Twist, cut. Take a little bit more here. Twist, cut, and now we're gonna start rounding down for this last piece. Leave out that hair you already cut underneath. So if you wanna put a clip here, you certainly can. So this time we're gonna really come back with it. Twist, 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 and then just cut out that little bit of hair there. And that's gonna fall in really nice to blend in. So you'll have your shorter layers up top, but they will blend in nice to flow with the longer layers we have in the back. So now that we've done our center part there, I'm just gonna take a little bit and move into my sides. And again, everything is gonna come back to the center of the head. We're not rounding with the head for the top. We're keeping everything to the center. Break that hair in half if you want to get a cleaner section. We can even grab this old hair, that's fine. And come back to center, angle up, cut, and continue grabbing that hair and moving with the roundness of the head, keeping at an angle, keep at center as best as you can. In person, standing in front of the client, you'd be able to see it a little bit better. 
or back to center. Up, 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 twist. Keep that angle. to the back. You're going to comb back with it in this crown area at an angle, twist, and just blend in that last little bit. You'll be able to see your guide, so it's always that very first section that I feel like is the most tedious and time consuming. So again, we're going to take our next piece here. This is the final piece for our top. inside of your comb to pull that tension. Angle up, cut. So you could, if you wanted to, round with the head. Um, I just like bringing it back to center. I feel like it helps create a little bit more flow everywhere too. She keeps coming off the stand. Um, I feel like it helps create a little bit more flow and especially too because this is technically a little bit of a disconnected haircut. I feel like bringing it to the center just slightly keeps it soft enough. So as the hair is down and it flows everywhere, you're creating a little bit more of that flow by creating those angles where you're not just coming straight up or straight out from your section you're cutting. back. Again, try not to pull from that underneath. Twist down and cut. And now just we're going to repeat our last section and then I'm going to get her dried and do any dry cutting that we might need to do or light texturizing. And then again, respray if you need this mannequin dries so fast. Okay, so we're going to finish out this last triangle, take our next guide, come down with it. And we're coming to center. You're going to angle up, take out that section if you need, so that way you stay cleaner with your guide. See my guide there? Twist, cut, and make sure that flows to your back. Perfect. Last piece, angle, I see my guide, cut. Flow back down. Perfect. Okay, so we got a nice face framing here. Imagine these are wings, and then we've got our body of length back here. I want to show you in her back wet. It's harder to see. But we have a flow of your top layers coming in. But if you lift this up, it's a very long layer. So you're keeping that weight, you're keeping the bulk of the hair, where with a shag, you're getting a lot more shorter pieces up in here, depending on, I guess, how much somebody wants. So you're getting a lot of movement still, but it's a much more softer haircut than a shag, and you're keeping more of that weight. You can see all that face framing through here. 
So I'm just gonna get her blow dried and then we will see what it looks like dry. I'll do some refining and we'll go from there. Okay, so I have got her dried and styled and I'm just gonna show you guys so you can see before I do any dry cutting. So we've got all this movement here in what is considered the wings that flows into our body, which is the back. Um, so again, I think I pointed this out earlier. One of the big points that are different in this haircut versus a shag is you're not gonna texturize this as much. You want the weight and the thickness. The most I'm gonna do is just soften this up around her face a little bit more. It's a little heavy. Um, and then I'll show you how you can, like I said earlier, this is where I struggle with this cut. There is supposed to be a little bit of a disconnect between these front pieces because they're the wings and the body, but I'll show you how you can slightly um, blend those in a little bit better should that be something that bothers you like me. So I'm just gonna lightly cut into this just to soften it a little bit. I think I wanna bring these up a touch more, but other than that, I'm liking how it looks. So this is where I would like come in with my razor and go to town and texturize it with my thinning shears. But again, we're trying to keep that weight. So I'm just gonna soften, soften it up by just lightly point cutting into it. And then I'm just gonna lightly kind of sliver this just a little bit more. I'm just gonna do very little point cutting all throughout her layers just to, like I said, soften them up more. I'm not trying to take out a bunch of weight or anything, but just to lightly soften it. movement and then as you can see here we've got our body so you've got some layers everywhere that are flowing into it from the top but you've kept a lot of that weight and thickness down here so as you can see here on the side this is where you get a little bit more of that disconnect it personally drives me crazy but if that's what your client wants go for it or if it's what you want that's great. So if you were wanting to connect these more, you would literally just bring the back a little bit forward at an angle and cut into it softly. It's still gonna appear to have a touch more of a disconnect compared to um, like the razor or another haircut. Again, this haircut is supposed to have one. So keep that in mind if you're wanting it for yourself or when doing it on a client. Think of it in the terms of that butterfly. You see the wings and then the body is separate from the wings. Looking good. I'm gonna get her styled and hair sprayed back to try to get some of this hair off my face, off of her face, and then we'll finish up. Here is our finished look. Lots of movement and shape. I started off with that triangle section in the front to set my guides, bringing the sides of the triangle back to the center to cut. Remember when creating the side layers, you wanna take diagonal sections and lightly angle your hands as you cut to help keep the flow of the layer soft. Along the top, remember to keep that angle as rounding with the head. The layers underneath in the back should be longer to keep more of that weight to create the body of the butterfly. Texturize if need be, but remember this should hold more weight Weight than a shag would. And if you want to connect the sides to the back a little bit more after styling, you certainly can. I so hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you again to Sleep and Glow for making this video happen as it allows me to continue to grow this channel. Be sure to check them out in the description below if you are in search for a pillow with some cool features. As always, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.